Hi guys. So I'm doing this video just to give you a little idea of how my work is. So this is a silicone elf, one that's pretty popular in my Etsy shop. And I am pouring this for a customer. Um, these are smaller creations, so I usually don't have to worry about degassing. Um, I tap. I do a lot of tapping to get the air bubbles to rise to the surface. And I do a pretty long, skinny stream um, pouring down deep in there. Uh, don't mind my mess because I am not the cleanliest of people when it comes to my workspace. But here you're seeing me pour the silicone into the glove mold that I created of my own creation that I hand sculpted. Bear with me because I am really new at all this stuff. I'm getting some help with all the technical things that's going on with my channel. So I'm just like the artist. Like I am not good with any of this other stuff. So this is my first video like this that I'm editing. But I know I learned from Carolyn Daughtry. Um, she is really good at explaining a lot of stuff. I'm probably nowhere near close to explaining anything, but I did learn from her, so I highly suggest going to look up her videos. Um, but I learned a lot from her. She's pretty, she's pretty an awesome person to be giving her time, and time is very precious, especially when you work with silicone. It's very tedious. There you see me squeezing the tips, so that way the bubbles come out from the fingers. Um, usually when you're pouring, you'll end up with like some air bubbles down next to the toes or the fingers because as the silicone cures, the air bubbles rise to the top. Um, so I do a lot of this extra tapping and flicking because I have found in my experience that it tends to help release the air pockets in bubbles and stuff. So I'm usually pretty successful. Um, if I have air bubbles, they're extremely tiny usually and towards the top um, where the pore spot is. So this one came out pretty decent. Um, didn't have too many air bubbles. Mostly at the top. I think a couple of the fingers had a couple in there, but that's pretty typical. And it's an easy fix. Tedious, but it's an easy fix. And I usually put little pins and stuff in mine. I don't know if other people have done that, but... I actually do that because it helps line up the seam um, and it holds the seam completely flush together and lined up when I'm putting the final coat to seal the back of the glove mold. So that's why you're seeing a bunch of pins and needles <laughs> sticking through the back of that seam. I'm not um, a person who usually follows the way other people do their things. I tend to do my own thing based on my experience. So I'm honestly not recommending any of the ways that I do this. Um, I'm sure there's way better ways. I am by far not the most experienced person at this at all. I'm still learning myself. But I like to share so that way maybe somebody could find some type of a useful tip that might work for them or an idea that might work for them. Um, this is how I actually let my creations cure. I usually suspend them like branching off something and I break some of my tools even by doing this but it is what it is. If there's any experienced people out there that are watching the video and they have tips for me, I accept 
what is it? Constructive criticism? Yeah. Constru constructive criticism. I appreciate that. Anytime I can learn from somebody, I am willing to learn. I did nursing for 15 years and because I can't pop pills, I actually have been succumbing to my injury. So I've worked since I was 16 and when I was out of work, not being able to nurse or do any of that, which I loved, um, I ended up starting to create little fairies and stuff, mostly for myself. But then I ended up realizing that they were pretty popular. And my mom told me that I should probably try to sell them or something. So I did. And I've gained some popularity and appreciation from other people. So I'm quite grateful for that. It's very um, humbling. Because I always appreciated art, but I've never had time to do it in my nursing career. So this is pretty awesome that I'm doing something I love. And I really like to put positive healing energy and intent into all the creations that I make. In hopes that they bring others happiness and smiles on those days that you really do need something to take you away from everyday life. So it's part of a little fantasy queendom of creatures that I like to bring to life. So I sculpt by clay and I also do silicone. I do other silicone too and reborn dolls, but the silicone is awesome because it's just so squishy and nice. So here I'm pretty much just about ready to quit and I'll let that sit and cure for about four hours because it's kind of cold. Um, on warmer days you don't have to let it cure as long but this will probably cure for about four hours and I'm pretty happy because I used almost exactly the amount of silicone that I needed and I'm not very smart when it comes to measuring. I usually end up with quite a bunch extra which is a lot of waste so I've been trying to be more diligent in paying attention to how much I use in each pour I'm kind of a ditz. My husband was like, why don't you just label the cups when you do the pours so you know how much. <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. But yep, I'm pretty much done right now. I'm just waiting for the air bubbles to surface and rise to the top. And sometimes if there's a larger pocket that was down towards the bottom of a toe or something it will rise to the top and then you will have a little bit of a gap in that top of the pore spout so you will know that that actually filled in where there was a air pocket down there and you'll have to add a little bit more of your fluid. Here I'm playing around trying to figure out the best way to get it to stick in there straight so it'll suspend evenly and cure properly. And you don't want it to be tilted at all. So a couple few final taps. This is my DIY degassing. <laughs> I'm going to get a degasser. I'm just, I don't like that kind of stuff. I'm weird. I'm kind of nervous about using stuff like that that I've never used. But I'm sure I'm going to get there pretty soon. So 
So there she is, suspended in midair. She will dangle there for a few hours, and then she will be demolded. And we'll see how she come out. And here it is. I'm pulling the seam off right now. That is a seam that every time you demold, you have to spray in there. This uh, mold release spray, I use Man brand mold release spray. And I'm gonna pull apart the seam. This mold really came out nicely. It's really easy to demold and to pour because the pour spout was made very well. It wasn't like too skinny. So when you demold, like I'm doing here, I squeeze like the little tips and the fingers, work it around in there. It'll help loosen it so you don't actually like when you're pulling your limbs and stuff out you don't really want to pull it and stretch it you want to pull and because it's kind of like I don't know if anybody has ever like touched an earthworm <laughs> I'm like you know not scared of that kind of stuff so with the earthworms if you pull too hard they snap and break and when you're trying to get them out of the ground so that's basically how it is with these things so you have to wiggle the little fingers around and smush them around at the tips and then see it just pops right out and as you can see the fingers are all there but there are a couple little air bubbles at the end and then the same with the other side i absolutely the, love the man release spray that was recommended by carolyn daughtry um she is she's just phenomenal i tried different a different spray originally and it was very tedious and frustrating to get the creation out of the mold, so I have not used it anymore at all. I only use the man release because it literally just, they slide right out of the mold. I mean, you really don't have to pull or anything. I really don't like the idea of having to yank and pull and yank and pull because it can damage the silicone. But this little girl here, she just popped right out. The molds are kind of fugly, but they work, so. I also am not like others. I don't do extremely heavy coating on my molds <clears throat> because I like them to be... Um, well, basically, I think they're more pliable if you don't put so many layers on. So it's basically have to put a layer that is sufficient enough for you to not rip the mold when you're demolding, but also where it's pliable enough where you can figure out where you need to squeeze and work and get your little limbs out. I'm just pulling some of the pieces of silicone off here and that's the pore spout that will get trimmed down okay guys this is her from the mold I painted her a little bit I'm in the process but I forgot and I wanted to make sure you guys got to see her. Thanks for watching.